Hi, today I want to install a new power outlet in our washroom. Why you may ask? We already have one because I want to install one of those automatic butt washing toilet seats. For so long have our butts been abused in the North American no wash dirty after sh system. What are we supposed to do? Just wipe? We all know that wiping just smudges the paint over the canvas. Sometimes when I wipe, I'll wipe and I'll wipe. It's like I'm wiping a marker or something. You go to Europe, they have bidets. You go to Asia, they have hoses in the washrooms you can wash yourself with or bidets. You go to Japan, oh man, Japan is a butt haven with their warm toilet seats and their precision washing machines. And in North America, we the poor immigrants are stuck with these gardening watering cans we have to fill multiple times to wash ourselves like a bunch of cave people or even worse just wipe to create some Rorschach image imagine you walk into some psychopathic office and they try to evaluate you by spreading their cheeks <laughs> I want to install a new outlet in my washroom that's all you need to know it would be a pretty safe outlet considering new or renovated houses like mine have GFCI protected outlets like this. I swear I thought it was protected, but there is no switch. Maybe it is. Let's test it. All I need is a 10 kilo ohm resistor I place between live and earth to create more than 5 milliamps of illegal current from live to earth. And if this thing has ground fault protection, it will pop open. Oh look, it has tiny protection doors. Ha! All I need is to push my meter's probe simultaneously into the doors and they'll open like this. Ah, Who the f left the meter in the current mode. Ah. Ah. Pop the breaker. We plug this in and we also plug in a light bulb so we can see the state of the outlets. And now we can safely plug in our 10k resistor between live and earth. Sh what the hell was that? This is a 1 ohm resistor. Must have been a mix up. You know, there are these devices that can safely check outlets and their faults because at some point such mistakes can delete you. So don't do it like I do, do it right. Popped it again. I feel much safer using Delete Me. My sponsor, Delete Me, is a hands free subscription service that removes your personal information that's being sold online by those pesky data brokers. You know, they pull your data from the cracks of the internet and make a complete nice collection of your privacy and identity to be sold to the highest bidder. That can be a scammer using it for phishing attacks, identity theft, or even physical stalking. Oh, hey, get away! Oh, oh, oh. Delete Me finds and removes your personal data from those people's search websites year round. You submit your information to Delete Me, their experts scan, find, and remove and repeat. I signed up with them and just after a week received my first report. I thought I was being careful with my information, but they found four brokers who had my phone, past and present addresses, everything. Removal in progress. Okay, good. You know how dangerous it can be for me and my family if I get doxxed? Thank God Delete Me is working. You should also sign up with them using my link joindeleteme.com slash electroboom to get 20% off all consumer plans and watch them work. More at the end. Oh wait, I already said everything. Anyway, let's make sure we pick the right one this time. Trying again with a 10k resistor. Oh, it turned off. So there is a GFCI device on this outlet? Where is it? There is one here, but this one is not popped. This washroom has a regular outlet like the other one, but this one doesn't have power too. How about this one? Oh look, it's here. <laughs> so it seems one GFCI device can feed multiple outlets. 
Good! So if I wire a new outlet in that washroom, it will be protected. You need to have ground fault protection, especially in the washrooms that can get wet. So here's the plan. I'll try to wire the power lines inside the wall into the cabinet and run it through the cabinet and install a new outlet on the side here. Let's go get some parts. Now we go to our local arts and crafts store to get some supplies. This should do it. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Here's what I got. If you're running the wires outside the walls, you need to get these protected wires covered in steel to make sure you don't accidentally puncture them. And this is the metal box for the outlet that will go inside the cabinet. Oh sh**. Oh man, I have drawers here. If I install this here, it's will stick out and interfere with the drawer and the drawer goes all the way to the back oh i guess i can install it over the wall here for an idiotic look no i'll install it inside the wall hopefully there isn't stud here in a good spot there's a stud here but so close to the wall i can't install this here i guess i have to install it on the other side of the stud but that means i have to wire through the stud how do I do that now? Let's calm down and see what we can do. Lucky for me, I already have a picture of the washroom before we install the drywall. And look at this. This is the stud I have to pass the wire through and it already has a hole here. <laughs> now, if only I can measure its distance to the ground. Okay, according to the estimates, it should be somewhere around here. It's behind the drawers, so nobody's gonna know if I make a mistake. Oh, I'm through. Let's stick some rod into it. Okay, how far will it go? Oh, it's going all the way in. Yes, we did it, guys. Oh, thank God. I thought that stud would be the end of me. What? You are through that. Now on this side, I like to run the wire straight down from the outlet in here. So I have to somehow drill here. Oh my God, it's so tight. How am I supposed to hold the camera and drill at the same time? Come on. We are through. Uh, now how am I going to pass the wire up there? We take the plate out. Use the Linus driver to remove this. We are almost in. Yes, we are in. Ah, Ouch! I forgot the live and neutral are on the side of this thing. Never grab it like that. More importantly, turn the breaker off before working on outlets. Most importantly, GFCI works when you place your body between live and earth, not live and neutral. Okay, let's see. It is safe now. Let's remove the outlet. What do you call these things? A receptacle? An outlet? A plug? What is it? Okay, now how in the world do I pull my wire into this thing? Apparently, you have to push the wire from outside the box into these things. How do I do that? Maybe if I get lucky and can push my rod through the hole into the outlet, I can perhaps run a string through it. Look at this, after half an hour of poking around, it's out. <laughs> now I guess we can pull it out and make a hook at the end of it. Tie a knot to the end of this thing. Pull the string through and it's out. <laughs> now let's see if we can run the wire through the wall. Oh, by the way, Jerry, thank you for the knife. This is awesome. When you have YouTuber friends with good products, you're always supplied. <laughs> Remove the shield from the wire. Yeah, eight inch should be enough. We strip the wire a little bit. Tie the three wires together. Make a hook. Tie the end of the string to it. Now pull the string through the wall and hope that it goes through. Guys, it came through. Yes, Whew, we did it. <laughs> now we cut a length of wire more than we need because if we accidentally end up shorter, we are ruined. 
drill holes in the sides of the cabinet to pass the wires through. To pass the wires through. We tie the wires to the walls with these things, nice and snug. Get up. Okay. Oh my god! Stay up here! Damn it. Okay, okay. And there. And I guess now we'll tie the live and neutral lines together. One from the city, one is going to the other outlet, and one extra wire to be tied together with these that goes to the current outlet. I try to tie them together nicely with a plier first, and then of course we'll use one of these nut thingies to tie them together permanently. Safe and sound. Same for the neutral and ground. Hook their ends. We hook it on. Black or live wire is on the short slot or brass colored screw and neutral is on the other side and ground is on this green thing. We line them nice and tight. Push these all back in. <sighs> screw it back on. This side is done. It would be funny if after doing all this, I can't pass this wire through the wall. Oh. Let's figure it out. The stud is around here. The center of the outlet will be around here. So I guess the outlet will be around here somewhere. We try to cut it open nicely. There we go. Oh. Fell in there. There is the stud right there. The question is, can I fish the wire through there? Okay, let's push it in and hope for the best. This is so tight here. Can I just grab the wire maybe? No! <laughs> Found it! The last tie down. Good. Do the usual drill. Pass the wire through that. Tighten it in place. Now we can, I guess, just push the excess wire back into the wall. There goes the box. We just have to screw it to the stud. Like this. Yeah, it's connected. Not the best box for the job though. But anyway, now we can connect the outlet to the wires. Yeah, I bought the wrong box for the job and I cut this hole too wide open. Eh, it'll be fine. But there are these boxes that actually clamp to the drywall and I don't need to screw them to the stud. Oh well, I learned my lesson. I'll do it better next time. For now, we'll strip these wires, hook the end of the wires, connect the wires to the outlet, screw the outlet to the box and connect the final panel on. Beautifully done, right there. Now I guess we will test it. We carefully turn the breaker back on. Okay, no yelling or screaming. Let's plug this in and see if we have power. Ah, there we go. And again, to test the GFCI, we plug these things in and we place our 10K resistor between live and earth. <laughs> it turned off there. The GFCI is popped. <laughs> Another perfect project down the drain. <laughs> now for the toilet seat, I guess we'll wait and see if somebody will sponsor me. But I guess now I have the means for a warm butt. I'm sure a ton of you are proper electricians that can leave a comment and let me know how I did things wrong and see if I care. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. If you don't know what you're doing, these things can be pretty dangerous. Always give it to a professional to do. I'm what you call a professional dumbass.